Hello everyone and welcome back to Local Town. I realized the music wasn't playing for you guys, so Jason just started singing, which is really great. Um, we are here to talk about video games. It is episode 69, which is the number I've heard is a thing. Uh, joining me this number. week, it's the Lord's number, as they call it. Uh, the Lord joining... giveth, and the Lord taketh. These jokes won't stop. Wah, wah. Uh, joining us this week, it's Ian Gibson. Hi, it's me. How's it going? Uh, Will's back, so I don't have to host anymore. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Speaking of thanking the Lord, Jason is here. We had a oh God thanking the Lord, and I'm not on His Lord's Day. God damn, man! I know it's only a Friday or a Thursday <laughs> yeah. if you go by the Greco-Roman calendar. Oh. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just mad at myself. I re realized I forgot to start recording, which means I have to wait for the Twitch one to finish, and then I have to download it. And now I'm just mad it's at a great myself intro already. <clears throat> yeah, it's a great we're intro, folks. It. We're here to talk about video games. But before we talk about the video game news, we got to talk about the video games we have been playing. Also, welcome to all the people who have raided uh, and are here <laughs> from Save Data. You're in for a better show, to be honest. Uh, wow. So, welcome. Uh, <laughs> moving <true>. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just... We, I will we, write we that down in my here. notebook. Yeah, just write it down will, in your notebook. Will make a real a bad joke towards us? Oh, wow. Wow. Time stamp it. Um... <laughs> Uh, so we got to talk about what we've been playing first. Uh, Ian, I want you to go first because this entire like week you have been playing the same game. That's been... <laughs> right. I can't stop playing Gran Turismo oh, 7. Fuck. <laughs> That's a lie. I've been playing it a little bit. Let me get this out of the way. Look, Gran Turismo 7 is it's still great i talked a lot about it on the last stream it still feels really really good um i'm just kind of at that point where i'm not really sitting down and binging it anymore i'm just doing there's basically like a daily challenge of like 26 miles of racing you hit 26 miles you get like a little roulette ticket which gets you free stuff kind of like a little loot crate type thing and so i've just been trying to do that every day so either after work or if i wake up early and i've got 20 minutes before work i'll sit down and just knock some races out it's just real cozy. It's just real fun. Uh, there's there's um one thing I want to talk about is the sound design in that game is really, really good. And I have a very good example, which is I don't have a very good surround. I, I don't have a surround sound system. I, I have a mediocre sound system. Half it's just surround. a 2.1. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it's a 3.1 now that I think about it. But anyways, it's not a good sound system. And it's not surround. But the other day I was driving in the game. Shut up. <laughs> and I was driving in the game and I started hearing this like mechanical like <laughs> sound. And it was almost like my washing machine was on. And so I paused the game and the, and the sound stopped. And it sounded like it was coming off to my right rear. And then I kept playing the game and it was intermittent. It was like this <laughs> sound. And then I realized it's because the car I was driving in when I got it above 125 miles per hour, it started to like shake and rattle a little bit. And I don't know how, but somehow this game sound design and definitely not my sound system because my sound system's not that good was placing it like behind me as if the car was rattling behind me, which is like somewhat accurate. And I was like, honestly blown away by how good that little detail was. Um, That's pretty impressive. There's another little detail they do, which is when you finish a race, it does like, oh, this is your credits. This is your place. And then you can like hit a button to like advance. If you don't hit a button, the music fades. And then the only sound you hear is your car cooling down. Like, you know how that like pinging, crinkling, yeah. crackling sound that happens as like your your exhaust system like re returns to a normal temp and it starts to like contract a little bit. It's just playing that very quietly in the background as as you're standing next to your car <laughs> after the race. And it's that's, like, damn, that's, that's pretty cool. Good. I thought you were going to say it's, it's just, just your driver just being like, oh, that was a really good race. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah, moving on. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I do have some qualms with it. Um, the UI is great, but it, they also like there's too much UI and there's some weird little UX flows. 
So for example, like I said, when you exit a race, it's like, hey, here's your total. And you hit you hit X button or cross to be like next, next screen. And by default, it's after you after it shows the result screen, you hit cross, it starts replaying the race. And then you have to hit circle to pop the menu Ooh. and then hit cross to do to exit the replay. And that's awful. Like literally like 99% of the time, you don't want to watch a full replay of the race you just completed. But like the default generic muscle memory flow just takes you right into the, to the, um, into the replay. And that sucks. So there's little things like that that are not perfect about the game, but it's still just real enjoyable racing. game. Also uh, one minor, minor quibble quibble, the music soundtrack. Um, the music soundtrack is like a really nice mix of like, jazz and some like cafe like muzak type music which honestly fits the game perfectly and then there's a little bit of like like weird like european rap like there's a track that has idris elba on it which is like and he's rapping and you're like okay okay this is okay um but then for some reason about 20 percent of the soundtrack is just like nickelback nick off nickelback ripoff rock band <laughs> and so you're you're driving and as far as i can tell i don't really have much control over the music so i'm driving and it's just like and then all of a sudden it's just like and i'm just like i want to quit this effing game right now because i don't want to listen to this and it sucks man so definitely some minor quibbles with the game I just... all that being said it still it still feels fantastic that sounds awful, but also you said Nick off, which makes me think there's some battle of the bands with like, okay, folks, tonight we're having a Nick off, so you can play the best Nickelback. Nickelback. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Reed obviously wins whenever they go. Yeah. So oh yeah, that's true. Look at this. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> I'm still having fun with the game. It's still really good. It's just I'm now probably 10, 15 hours into it, so I'm starting to really hit those rough edges. Um, there's not a lot of them, but they do start to. How's the you. like car economy? Still, awful? honestly, it's fine. There's yeah. a caveat. There's a number one caveat, which is they they did an apology. So basically, if you log into the game, I think before the end of May or June, you get a million credits right off the bat as like a hey, sorry, we really messed this up. Here's a million credits. So that has helped float me. But at the same time, it's really not that bad. Like, like people were complaining about how if you want, like there was a Rolls Royce, uh, or no, sorry, it was a Mercedes. It was a 1939 Mercedes that went up for sale in the game yesterday. Uh, I don't know if it was new to the game, but I mean, in my campaign, it popped up for sale and it was 18 million credits, which I believe is like a hundred dollars of like real world money if you wanted to buy those credits. But at the same time, like the driving in this game is so good that I don't need a 1939 Mercedes. Like, honestly, I've been driving like a 1965 Mini Cooper and it's a lot of fun because that's a fun car to drive. So it's one of those things where it's like they give you a decent amount of money in the races. The loot boxes, they they give you pitiful money, but you're always kind of getting it. And the difficulty is not that hard where if you're at least decent at racing, you can win races without having to either buy a super nice car or having to put a lot of money into your car to upgrade it. Mm -hmm. so it feels like the economy is actually kind of balanced as long as you don't care about supercars because like i don't know if you're some forza fanboy and you're like jerking off over mclaren's then it's like yeah you're gonna hate this game because you're gonna basically afford two every 20 30 hours of gameplay or i'm sorry you're, you're probably gonna only afford one every 30 hours of gameplay you're only driving with one but, hand i know but <laughs> look let me tell you about one of my favorite cars which is a 1990 Mazda Miata and folks, they've got it in the game and it's a lot of fun to drive. And I tell you what, when you go in a tunnel, the pop-up headlights come up in the game, nice. which is fantastic. Like there's the, the driving feels so good that in something like Forza where the driving doesn't feel that good, you're like, well, let me at least get a fast car. So at least feels fast, even if the tire physics don't feel that good. Whereas in this game, like literally like I was, there's this really fun challenge where you're driving a, an old Willys Jeep on dirt. And it just feels fantastic. And you're like, hell yeah, this thing cost me like 20,000 credits. It was nothing. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I, I understand people's complaints with the economy. But at the same time, that's really only impacting you if you care about either collecting every car or care about the supercars. In which case, you really shouldn't. There's so many good cars that are affordable in this game. It's a lot of fun. 
Interesting. Yeah. What else have you been playing? That's all I've been playing. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, I may or may not be playing a game right now. Um, are you playing it right? You are playing it right now. <laughs> I see look, you on Discord. Look, let me tell you something. All right. Uh, what was this? Like six, nine months ago, uh, Zach six, from nine. Save Data Who? came into... Yeah, that's fair. Zach from Save Data. Who? I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He came into our Discord and he said... Oh. And he posted an article about an idling game, an idle incremental game. That's basically RuneScape, old school RuneScape, but without any of the UI or controls. It's just, it's all the skills and leveling of old school RuneScape boiled down to just like an incremental game. So instead of you having to go to a forest and do a chopping action, you have like a wood cutting idle section that you say cut wood and it just keeps cutting wood as long as you let it go. <laughs> yeah, you did this. Act. I did this to um, me. And I don't know, I was bored last week and I was like, you know what? I was sitting here and I was like, I need to listen to some podcasts and I'm sick of like doom scrolling on Twitter. And I was like, give me a good idle game. And I cracked it open. It's only 10 bucks on Steam. And folks, I can't stop playing it. Um, are you guys fans of idle games or incremental games? You know, I like to make progress pretty quickly. <laughs> um, I like it. It's, it's fair. I played the crazy taxi idle game for a while. To the point that I had to delete it too. because I was just playing it too much. Um, and I played the A Dark Room. I played that a lot in uh, when I took community college <laughs> classes for classes I didn't need to take. So I just played that the entire class. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention this game is called Melivore Idol. Um, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about incremental games. And there's like there's like a very... It's hard to design an idle game because it's really all about like manipulating the player's emotions. You know what I mean? Like you need to, at the beginning, you need to hook them with a lot of free drugs. And by that, I mean, you need to have like numbers that go up quickly and you like, you click a button and it goes up and then you like, Oh, I can afford this. And you click it and everything doubles. And you're like, Oh God. Yes. Yeah. Give me them endorphins. You know, that's, that's like what a good one is. And then it needs to like open up some depth and, and, you know, kind of like universal paper clips be like, Hey, what if there was a fake stock market you could use to also bring stuff up uh, as, as an idler incremental. And, and, I don't know. This Melvor Idol, it's a little weird because I don't think it's perfect. It actually has some flaws. Like, it's literally, I'm looking at the list. There's like 20, 25 different ways to level up, like mining, smithing, thieving, farming, crafting, rune crafting, agility, summoning, astrology. But it doesn't really do a good job. Like, literally, the tutorial is 10 minutes and it's like, look, here's wood crafting. Click to, to, click to cut down a tree. Okay, now here's, here's mining. Click to mine some. Okay, now here's smithing. Make something out of the out of the or you just mind. But then once the tutorial's done, you're literally just looking at this giant list of skills and every single one of them is super slow and unfulfilling at the start. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I feel like an incremental should be the opposite where the first hour should be like the most exciting jam packed hour of gameplay with that game because they're constantly throwing numbers and making everything go up at you. And then you get into the feel of the game and it slows things down a little bit. Yeah. And this was just very slow from the start. Is that, is, is that, do you feel like that's a valid complaint? Yeah, I can see it. Like you, you want it to get going, you know, you want to see like yeah. those returns quickly. So, you know, like the long term is going to be even, 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 even if those quick returns are meaningless in the grand scheme at the yes. beginning, like as long as you're seeing them, I think like that sort of incremental in, in the name yeah. works out. And I think that's what I kind of struggled with was it did not have that at all at the beginning. I was literally struggling. I had to go to their wiki and follow a guide, which was basically like, how do I start this game? Because like most idle incremental games, they have like click the button. Like you have a button or something like that. You have a number and that's all you have. And then they start to expose more mechanics as you play the game. This is the opposite. Like you have every single mechanic pretty much in front of you. And you don't really know where to start, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, you start to kind of understand things where you're like, oh, I'm going to cut wood so then I can use the wood and fire making to get ore. And then I mean, coal, and then I can use that coal in smithing to then make items. And it's you, like you start to see the flow, but at the same time, it's not perfect and it's not very rewarding. That being said, 
there's something about this game that is fantastic that means i can't stop playing it even on the so show I, he's that dedicated i'm not saying i might as well <laughs> i bought it on steam i didn't realize there's also an android and a web browser version of it oh, i guess android ios and web browser version of it if you buy the steam copy and then you like create an account with the melvor idle developers you get the mobile and the web versions for free and they have one of the best cloud save systems I have ever seen. So basically, every time you boot up the game, no matter where you are, they like they give you two options and the options are local save or cloud save. And they have like a big red on one and a big green on the other. And the green means this is your latest save. And it has an exact timestamp of like, this is your cloud save from 743. And it's green, which means this is your latest. And you click on it and then it's like, are you sure you want to load this save? It is a cloud save. This is the time. And it is your most recent save or like this is not your most recent save. And you click. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm OK with that. And it loads you in the game and you're right where you left off. But the better part is it's not where you left off. It's every time you save, they save what you were doing. So, for example, I opened the game an hour ago on my phone. And I set it to wood cutting. So I was chopping two trees at the same time. And then I put my phone down. And then I came in here. And for the podcast, I opened it on my PC. And it said, hey, here's your cloud save. It's more recent than your PC's local save. Do you want to load that? And I said, yes. And it opens up. And boom, I'm still wood cutting. And I got all that wood cutting progress from the last hour. So the fact that it's like, I'm literally at work just being like, I got a couple seconds. Let me just open it up on my phone, make sure everything's good. Oh, let me switch over to this craft. Let me sell these items. Okay, back to it. So like the fact that it makes it so accessible in terms of being able to pretty much access it anywhere and keep it running has honestly kept me in the game. I've just been playing this all the time for the last week. It's it's like saving, like solving cloud saving for an aisle game has made it incredible. I don't know. Do I sound like an addict to you? <laughs> a little bit that's kind of yeah, yeah. You're, play you're playing it currently I'm... <laughs> it's it's just going you know i'm cutting wood i'm cutting you trees hey, and hey, magic boss, trees i gotta boss, make some money i gotta make some fires <laughs> i'll get you those reports it's just i i, I gotta run I to the bathroom again first. i really gotta pee again uh just give me a give me a couple minutes honestly though that's the sign of a good idle game you yeah. you know what you're getting into he has been <laughs> in know. the bathroom for 15 minutes i wonder what he could be doing huge wood cutting level Huge. Oh, baby. Oh, what a oh. log. I used to do that a lot with um, Eggs Inc. Or Egg Inc., which was another really oh, good yeah. idle game on the on the phone. I used to take like 30-minute bathroom breaks when I was still working in the office just to deal with my chickens and eggs. It was so good. <laughs> anyway, Deal with your chicken and been, eggs. That's all I've been playing. <clears throat> I, am, I am so happy for you and your idle games. Um... Uh, sorry, Zach in the stream. Oh, OG Zach in the stream chat uh, asking what game we were talking about. Melvor Idol. Melvor Idol. Ten bucks on Steam. Does, Try he out. Or, does he spell his name with a K or a C? -K no, because he's not an idiot. It's a C. <laughs> Actually, real quick, Zach, honestly, I think the browser version of this, it's not free, but I think it gives you like 70% of the game for free. He just rated you. <laughs> so you might as well. You might as well try it out. <laughs> you see if you, get, you see if you get invited to any failed Mario Party streams anytime soon. Listen, they keep <laughs> saying they're gonna have me on stuff, and I haven't gotten a single DM. So <laughs> I, I think just empty promises over there at Save Data. Um, uh, speaking of empty promises, uh, you have an empty playing section here, yes. Jason, in the document. Have you been playing nothing? Yes. No. Okay. So I'm gonna explain this out. I've been playing my normal stuff. I got back from vacation two weeks ago, so I didn't want to get into like anything else. So I just been doing my normal stream, fire emblem, or like league stuff. But I did want to talk about one. One of the things is I, I'm doing a half marathon, so that's been distracting as hell. So I'm Ooh. That. Ooh. So that's have you had up... to cut? I, I don't mean up, but have you had to cut down your chalky milk diet? I haven't drank chocolate milk in three and a half to four weeks. So. What? God! How are yeah. you alive right I now? I don't know. It's been a while. I'm rewarding myself Sunday after I finish the race. <laughs> Hello, two government? Gallons? Maybe two <laughs> gallons, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever recover. He's going to double fist it right as yeah, right he gets past the, the finish, finish line. line. Oh! <laughs> uh, but, but I do have, instead of instead of, instead of of uh, games, I, I, I kind of wanted to plug, I, I, I hope you don't find this weird, but I kind of wanted to plug, I've been watching a lot of the NBA playoffs, or like the, the news around the NBA playoffs, because this, this fucking series, they're, they're crazy. Give me the goss. 
Give, I love give me the hockey. craziness. Well, the be- so if you, I mean, you should be watching. Even if you don't watch basketball, watch TNT's coverage of it, like with Chuck, Charles, uh-huh. Shaq, and Ernie. Like, yes, I saw a good clip with Shaq this week. The, their 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 <laughs> jokes, even if like you're not watching the playoffs at all, the, the, which are fantastic, by the way. Uh, I'm still in the running with having my two picks, like which was uh, the Bucks and the Warriors are going to be in the finals, in my opinion. But the the best news was when like the Nets get like swept, and they have Kevin Durant. Uh, Kyrie Irving and like a bunch of other like James Harden went off the team. Their their season was a mess, and like the memes that came out of them getting annihilated. There's Ben Simmons memes. Just look them up. He's wearing like <laughs> a clown costume on the sideline, and people oh are like, "Man, God. why is why is Ben Simmons dressed as a pack of Skittles out there?" It's just the jokes around <laughs> these like guys is so fucking good. And then TNT good. doubles down on the coverage. They had a uh, uh, since Durant got knocked out. Chuck said some bus rider comment, and that's the been the big one. Uh, like he was a bus rider, not a bus driver, when he was in Golden State, and I was like, "Holy so fuck!" Good. And they 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 find like Kevin Durant got so pissed he responded to him. So like they're they're doing this, and then the producers are like, "Hey, never give us a chance to like respond, or we'll fuck you, Kevin Durant." And they yeah. got it at the end of the show. They get an actual bus for Charles Barkley to drive, and they run over Kevin Durant and like a picture of Kevin Durant and Simmons signs outside. <laughs> it's the coverage and the memes that come out oh of this, God. like the the NBA playoffs. If you haven't been caught up on it, uh, they are just super good. Like I said, the Nets losing is great. 76ers might throw a three one lead again for like Doc Rivers again. <laughs> There's so many like storylines out there that are just so fucking good. That, that sounds if you so good. Aren't, if you aren't doing it or aren't like catching up with them, even if you don't watch basketball, just check out TNT's coverage of it. Like it takes like ten minutes a day. You'll find a clip of it. Like they they've been covering it every day this week and the past week and a half. So yeah, that's what I've been doing is that and running. So healthy stuff and a healthy dosage of laughing. So thumbs up to that. No, we'll get back to gaming hopefully soon. But like once the the race, I can actually focus on starting a new mm-hmm. game. I would be playing Advance Wars, but it's not out. Because they had to push it back. Wow. Uh, yeah, because of nine eleven. Because yeah. of not no, not not because of nine eleven, but the uh, they they I'm surprised they didn't back in the day. Uh, <laughs> they did actually because of nine eleven. They probably feel guilty about they, it. They in, in, the OG one got pushed back because of nine eleven. Guilty. But, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's the Ukraine it. Russian war. Yeah, they pushed back. So yeah, Nintendo so. didn't do nine eleven. Do you think honestly? I'm just gonna say it. If Nintendo came out with the game now and said, honestly, Ukraine's doing really well in the war right now, so it's okay for us to push the game out, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I buy that. True, I buy true. that. Thing. Things are going a lot better than they really should be, but okay. I yeah, I would be talking about that, but uh, Nintendo uh, decided no because of circumstances. Actually, Russia bastards. decided no because they're bastards, so <clears throat> sorry. I, w- I was playing the Game Boy version, uh, and I gotta, I gotta pick it back up now that I got my pocket. And, uh, I've been thinking about it. picking it up. Yeah, it's a Game Boy good. version. They um, just added someone uh, 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 created the ability to sideload uh, ROMs onto the pocket now through the SD card because they haven't nice. released the official uh, stuff yet. So that's pretty exciting. I'm going to wait till it's more official before I do it, but um, seems safe. Stuff. Yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing. Um, Moving on, my turn, my turn, folks. Talk about what I've been playing. Everyone, don't get distracted. It's my turn. Um, Elden Ring. I am on the last boss. I have fought them two or three times. Um, Ooh. I, uh, it's it's. Well, I don't want to spoil the game. Uh, the game's been out <clears throat> for two months. That's true. Well, you it's fight uh, Rat Radagon, and then you kill him, and then the. Radigan. Radigan the and then the, yeah the great mouse detective and <laughs> yeah. then um out of his corpse of the mouse corpse it's comes Radagast the, you know, Radagast comes the, the brown the, comes the Elden Beast uh and you gotta fight two bosses uh and it's two full health bars and you, there's no checkpoints um and that's it so okay, well, I, I've gotten to the, how many people <laughs> did you um how many people have you summoned uh nobody just my me and my mimic um so i've i've gotten the first boss down pretty quickly uh but the uh, it, the attempts i get to the second boss is mostly like me trying to figure out 
what I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. So it's like, as I'm, it's kind of working out because as I'm getting better at the first boss, I'm I'm kind of uh, working on getting that shorter down so I don't use as many health potions and all that sort of stuff. So it's working out. It's fun. Um, I really enjoy that game. I'm almost 90 hours. I'm like 130. Uh, I went through all Consecrated Snowfield, Mikola's Halig Tree. I saw, I walked into the fight with Millennia died once and i or fought her once and i said i don't want to do this so i just went to the end of the game instead of fighting her um so that's been fun i'll i'll probably do some more there's a couple areas i haven't finished um like there's some ever jails i haven't done and so i'll just like finish that stuff out use up all my runes try to level up as much as possible and then go hit it again right now it's like 115,000 runes per level so it's like takes a bit to kind of kind of get up there uh and then other than that uh we i've been playing deep rock galactic the new season comes out next week for consoles it's out on steam right now uh i'm excited for season two they're adding these season one and season two they've really been like adding content to it and uh like story content and like kind of expanding their sort of universe their battle pass system is great they're listening to audience feedback they're adding even more stuff this time uh we talked about this on was it sunday when we played hell let loose <clears throat> and yes. we were talking about like they added um so all of the cosmetics from season one now go into like the backpacks and treasure chests you find in the world and oh that's nice all the cosmetics that were in the store stay in the store so mostly cosmetics in the store cost like money plus uh uh like an enor pearl or jadiz or whatever like the different resources you find so Jadiz now nuts. you can either pay that and use your resources which go to tons of different things very funny joke um like uh upgrades and perks and all that sort of stuff or there's a new currency you can use just flat out to buy uh cosmetic items from the shop and then you would think oh they're gonna have people pay money for that no, it's just another thing you find in the missions. There's, so there's zero microtransactions. It's kind of wild. Like, at this point, they, they come out with DLC for um, specific cosmetics. They're like seven bucks each, and they do it every so often. But none of that is game mandatory or anything. So it's kind of wild how, how, like, how great they're doing at running their game. Convince um, the save data people to play it be with you as their thing because I own oh, it too. I love Deep Rock. It's so good. Yeah. I will play it with you. I play the Windows version, which is not the same as the Steam version, but it's free on Game Pass. Um, so yeah, they have no excuse. There you it's go. essentially free, and I'll play with you. Save data. I'll play with you. Uh, and on top of that, <laughs> they made a uh, Deep Rock Galactic board game, which looks really awesome. And uh, Karen and I missed the pledging on the Kickstarter by one oh, day. Oh, damn. my God. By one day, we were very, very, very mad. Uh, and then two days ago, they announced uh, another month of uh, you can now pledge to it after it was successful. Um, and you pledge to it at the same price, and you get all the stretch goals. Um, cool. no upmark or anything like that. So we went in for the, I think the collector's edition, which we were going to do the deluxe edition, uh, but for like 20 bucks more, it was the, the collector's edition and I got a mouse pad. Um, and it comes with a bunch of stuff and it comes with all the STL files. It comes with minis, but also the STL files for the minis, uh, which <laughs> is really cool. Uh, so we're going to get that and start painting them. And I'm very excited for that. I don't even care if the board game's terrible. Uh, but from what I watched of them playing it, it looked kind of fun and way better than the Dark Souls board game. Oh, God, that board game was it's real bad. Dark Souls board game? Oh, my. It's bad. Yeah, it's not good. I heard the best version, the best way to play a Dark Souls board game, and it's fun, is by yourself, which is not a reason I want to play a board game. It doesn't make any sense to play a board game by yourself. But... Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game sucked. We made it more fun by not listening to the rules. <laughs> Although, honestly, I was just about to say, even us trying to ignore rules and make up our own couldn't even get the game to be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, nothing else. Oh, I, I started Bug Snacks today, but I'm not far enough in it to talk about it, So, Fun game. Uh, 
yeah it's on game pass so get game pass uh hashtag oh, ad, not ad that's right i forgot it's it's newly on ad. game pass right yeah i installed it um okay time for the news i'm gonna hit the news button it's gonna play the news theme here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's, what's up, up news, news? Oh, thanks, Zach Crosby, for the theme. Yeah, Fantastic. that is the better Zach actually singing that one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's been so supportive. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Oh, anyways, the stream brought to, you by, so <laughs> brought to you by the Pirates of the Caribbean world in Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, my God. Yarr! um folks uh we've got plenty of news to talk about um starting off here with activision's this kind of plays into the other ones activision's newest financial results uh, i'm gonna click on this twitter link here and refresh my brain um and i say this leads into some other things because some news came out today so this was uh activision's financial results from i believe this was monday the 25th uh, Modern Warfare 2019 sequel is going to be the, quote, most advanced experience in the franchise history. Uh, and then uh, new free-to-play Warzone will be revealed later this year, built from the ground up. Uh, I that's, was, uh, that's interesting. I was reading some more about this um, from... Uh, I, I can't remember if, uh, one of the guys I work with who's like a Battle Royale expert... But mostly saying, um, like, Fortnite was built from the ground up with changes in mind. And Call mm-hmm. of Duty, didn't like, changes to the map. And Call of Duty didn't really plan for that. So this new one, yeah. they're planning, uh, they're building the map so they can change things on the map rather than changing maps. Which I think yeah. a lot of people prefer that. Um, so I'm excited for that. Warzone's cool. Uh, they got that Godzilla thing and King Kong thing coming up. Uh, and then finally here from Nibel's, like... Wait, what? Uh, you just threw that out there. They got oh, sorry. Godzilla I thing. assume people know about this because I deal with this stuff all the time. Uh, there's, like, what's crazy to me. Kong versus Godzilla came out a year ago. Good movie. Great movie. Uh, their new uh, cross-brand deal with Warzone comes out next week. Uh, where Godzilla <laughs> and Kong fight on the Warzone map. Oh my god. A la Fortnite, you can't kill each other, what? you just watch it happen. That's <laughs> Which insane. Is wild. We um, have to stream this, don't we? Is this a live event or is it just like it's occurring in matches? I think it's like, yeah, it's it, you join into a special match and watch it happen. So we can totally stream oh, it. That's awesome. Uh, I that's think awesome. it's the 11th. You can double check me on that. September? Um, Look, you can't softball me like that. Okay, it's a Wednesday, yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to yeah. kick Kyle out of his slot, uh, dirty slot. We can just do it with Kyle. Actually, you know what? Kyle can just <laughs> stream it, and I'll just watch the stream. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle, yeah. listen here, buddy. Um, and then finally, here on these uh, highlights, Diablo Immortal is supposed to launch on June second. You don't have phones, or you have phones, don't you? Uh, famous line there. Uh, this leads us into the not the next story the story after that uh today they revealed call of duty modern warfare 2 the logo um not the call of duty I, modern warfare 2 that came out i know 15 I, years I, ago I literally, when they did this i had to google it because yeah. i was like isn't that exactly the same and it is it is literally exactly the same name and it's not a remake remaster. It is a sequel to the 2019 Modern Warfare, which was a different game. I mean, I just the, I don't understand. It's the same name as the first game, too, minus the four. It's like, yes. I don't I don't understand. Like, I get you want to remake those stories in a modern setting because we've moved on from that war. And you want price back in it. And you want all this modern stuff. But you don't have to do Modern Warfare. You could have picked anything else. Let me, well, let me to be they're calling it basically off their i don't want to say like their their where they got their start but like that could be like the callback they're like it's like coke yeah. going to coke zero but like yeah. this is our classic game like i don't know it I, makes sense you know me. honestly i i totally understand because you can't blame activision for this we really need to be blaming ourselves and let me tell you why true because modern pop culture is very very derivative 
It's all about the same IPs, which are basically identical to each other. It's about one superhero movie after the other that are basically identical. And so why do they need to put the effort into not necessarily a new IP, but even just a new title for an existing IP when they know they can get the same level of buy-in from fans, if not yeah. more buy-in, by simply just using the exact same name as a previous favorite game. And fans, they will suckle at that teat no matter how much shit you shovel in their mouth. And so why why should they put the effort into coming up with something new when they don't yeah. have to? We're we're to blame. We did this to us. Okay? Well, I did this to me. Get some fucking taste, people. That's all I gotta say. I, I can compare it to, oh, I was say I can compare it to when, when Battlefront, EA bought Battlefront. They just yeah. did battle, or like EA's Battlefront. Yeah. They didn't even change the like they just like, oh, just put EA in front of it and nobody would fucking notice. And they're worse than they did. They, yeah. Yeah. They're terrible, but they still sold enough to have a sequel because yeah. people slurped it up. Yep. Um, isn't there's already a Modern Warfare 2 remaster as well, isn't there? I thought there was, yeah. 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 Well, actually, I don't know about two. I know there was one. I, I four, think there right? is. There's a four remaster, and I think there's a Modern Warfare yeah. 2 re You're remaster because right. I remember seeing the but remaster th of that is... opening soap snow climb. But this is different, right? Because wasn't Modern Warfare 2019, wasn't it like a pretty decent reimagining no yeah no i'm just saying yeah. now there's three games called modern oh, warfare geez, 2 you're right <laughs> oh jeez. they didn't oh, reveal geez. they didn't reveal if it would take after like the exact story of like modern warfare 2 again but just like no it, it's updated today it, it's just based off of modern warfare okay 2019, 2019. but are they it's, gonna have yeah, a no russian 2019 because I was gonna say, do they have the, one of the most controversial scenes of like of all of gaming was that one obvious when you when you were pretending to be the Russian guy in the airport. Yeah. They had yeah. that in that game, and then they also had like fan favorite characters from the series, like Soap and Ghost, obviously in there too. But you know, yeah, and I just ending. like. Yeah, I think Modern ending, Warfare. Too, yeah. yeah, I think Modern Warfare 2019. I never played it, but I'm pretty sure that's the one where they referenced the Highway of Death from the the gulf war yeah. where the u.s basically just massacred a whole bunch of like retreating like civilians and military in iraq and kuwait and but they referenced it by saying that the russians committed it and so i i just have like zero respect for this franchise trying to do anything seriously with any sort of serious tone considering they can't even they can't even face the truth of the situation or the complexity of the situation and they still try yeah. and paint it with a black and white brush yeah, it's like, I, I, but the other, like, <clears throat> back to the naming conventions, like, like Jason was saying, like, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is the, like, turning point for Call of Duty and popularity. Like, they were just World War II games before that, and that multiplayer yeah. was insanely good, uh, and it blew yeah. everyone's minds, and it's like, you're, you're going back to the well by using that name like you were saying Ian you're also muddying the waters with that stuff yeah that's a good point it's you like you could potentially original. like not in a like I'm not saying these games are going to be bad but you have to think like you could potentially put out a big old stinker and ruin that legacy by by calling it that it's like Battlefield 2042 or 20, 2042 I don't know the last battlefield whatever game. the new one is yeah. yeah it's like it's so close to the other title names it like it's just like uh do i even want to touch I battlefield yeah. anymore you know so it's like yeah just it's it's a bad idea overall I, I, um you, if, if you want bad naming games though or naming conventions just follow square enix so they'll copy that that's true 356 that's true. over eight things. um there is one other piece of news in here in this activision press bundle uh diablo immortal which is the mobile game that was kind of booed as soon as it was announced on stage and then blizzard had the terrible reaction of like well you guys just don't have taste because mobile games are really cool now it's also coming to pc <laughs> boom this <laughs> activision is just like activision across the board is just a mess right now like every which way you look at them they're just a mess it's crazy how many like it's like 
bad decisions. It's it's like the Overwatch 2 beta, closed beta just started, and all the people are saying, like, it's basically Overwatch. Like, this should have just been an update and not a brand new title. Like, it's literally almost identical, and it's and just crazy. It was also the way they announced Diablo Immortal, like, as the next Diablo and, like, hyping it yeah. up, and nobody wanted that. It's like they... um reveal today they're like hey join us whenever for the warcraft mobile reveal we're gonna do it next week like if they had done that with God. diablo immortal it would have been fine like set like, expectations yeah, yeah people would have been fine with it and like this i'm like okay cool yeah i'm fine with this i'll see what a warcraft mobile game is maybe i'll play it um yeah but when it's like like i feel like they had to pivot hard and be like no diablo 4 is happening like it's yeah. just wild to me um i will say uh, there was one good piece of activision blizzard news this week which is that the next step in the acquisition by microsoft has been passed activision blizzard shareholders have approved the sale to microsoft as expected but it is an important step um i know i sound like a microsoft fanboy honestly they're fucking killing it over there right totally. now uh, but uh, this I'm very supportive of because like we're talking about Activision Blizzard is in such a bad state right now that they absolutely need a shakeup in leadership. And I think bringing them in under Microsoft, I'm not saying that is going to save them, but it is at least a step in the right direction. The first step being shake things up because whatever they're doing right now is not working and you got to have massive change. Yeah, I agree. Um, I um, voted on that because I own shares. So like the Robin Hood app asked me to vote, but I voted a while ago, which was kind of weird to me, but I guess that kind of makes sense. They probably just kicked him out uh, mm -hmm. as soon as, it... but I was really happy to learn that the golden parachute for Bobby Kotick and everyone to get their money. What only went over by a tiny, tiny margin. Cause I voted against it. I was like, Oh wow. I was like, screw you. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is just one of the small uh, hurdles to get over. They still have, uh, a bunch of other stuff, EU, China, FTC, um, and some other things to get through. But I think it'll, I think it'll work out. They're killing it, uh, like you said. Uh, quick note here: uh, not game, not Subpixels Game of the Year 2021, but Close. Subpixels Game of Our Heart. Uh, okay. Valheim, uh, as a Monday, 10 million copies sold. Uh, congrats to them. Another fine product from, I believe, Coffee Stain. Who also the uh not publishers satisfactory. of satisfactory and uh deep rock um yeah that's awesome valheim's great i uh, yeah i've been waiting for they've an update out... to bring me back in it hasn't exactly. happened yeah, they've yet been, they've been putting out incremental updates they have been keeping the game but i'm i'm waiting for a huge batch of stuff not necessarily in one update but i'm kind of waiting for it to build up so that when i dive back into the game it feels fresh to an extent and i'm not quite there yet maybe by the end of the year who knows yeah yeah um i, I feel like it's not like i don't want to go back it's just like i i i want to play it I, I could play it now but i want something to bring me in to play it uh because that'll yeah. kind of it's like with deep rock like the season two coming out is bringing me into it you know um so i'm excited to play that uh you ever play valheim jason i have not no it's good Ooh, it's fun it's real it's good. Fun. If it's if it's a game of the year in your hearts, though, I mean that's that's something I gotta take in, you know. Yeah. Into consideration yeah. there. Yeah, it's um my favorite part is probably the soundtrack. I describe it as fantasy jazz. It's so good. It makes you feel good. It's on Spotify. Yep. Uh, I listen to it a lot. Uh, next up, um, Chris Pratt fans in the audience here, please raise your hands. Uh, Woo! raise your hands for God. Um, Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Film has been delayed to April 2023. I, I, you know, I don't like this news. Hey, I think it should be delayed longer. Permanently. Hey, Ian, this is Miyamoto. This, I, this is Miyamoto. I know, I hear you. I know, but, but look, rip the band aid off. As soon as you said Chris Pratt was in this movie, it's going to be bad. So just rip the band aid off. Just put it out tomorrow. I want to be done with it. I want to forget this as soon as possible. And the further it gets delayed, the more it has to live I'll, in my head. I'll, I'll ask you guys this question, uh, both of you. Over or under, is this worse than the 90s Super Mario Brothers? Worse. The live action? Worse. 100% yeah, worse. worse. That Guaranteed. movie is peak cinema. Okay. Yeah. Like, like that movie, I haven't seen it in a long time. 
but I do remember, and I'm pretty sure that it is at least weird enough to be an entertaining experience watching it. it. It's it's it might be in the close realm of it's so bad it's good. That's yeah, what you're getting at yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah. Whereas this is just going to be a generic ass animated movie, like oh, that sorry. Chip and Dale, that Chip and Dale trailer that came out the other day, where it's just like. They're really I, phoning it in here. I think that Chip and Dale was cool because of all the different animation styles. I thought that was neat in that trailer. Um, so I can host this show without you. Fuck so you. Careful. Uh, great, fantastic insult just came in straight from Save Data. Wow. Genuinely surprised Ian doesn't like Chris Pratt. <laughs> you know what? I loved him on Parks and Rec, and then he just started yeah. to become generic. And he got cast in way too much stuff and was playing the same role all the time. Has like a lot so, of actors nowadays though too. That's um, true. true. Overused. Tom Holland. Uh, I think my favorite part of this yeah. entire delay thing is it was the Nintendo of America account tweeted out very first line, "This is Miyamoto." Like he has to reassure us, "This is Miyamoto. <laughs> it's me." They don't have a gun to my head, or maybe they do. <laughs> um, How much did that get pushed back? It says it's. It, I mean, like it, was it? Was it planned for this year? It was planned for yeah, 2022. Five, I don't was think it, Christmas it had a... of 2022 or this year. I don't think it had a date in 2020. Oh, okay. But you would, but you would figure holiday 2022 yeah. is probably a good time. So I don't think it's yeah. super far. Um, but I wonder why. I mean, yeah, I guess they, they had to push it. it they early. had to push it back because the Ukraine Russian war. He yeah, Mario actually uh, fights for the Russians. <laughs> yeah, in, in exactly. a war. We push it back. Like, <laughs> he's a Russian movie. plumber. He just gotta mix it up somehow. <laughs> yeah, no Russian. Then <laughs> <And> shoots Toad. <laughs> no Toads. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, moving forward, there's here's a report from uh, Gamespot. Uh, Gamespot. Uh, there are like a bunch of weed smokers on the internet. Um, <laughs> dishwasher. Um, talking about PS Plus uh, reportedly is going to include two hour time limited game trials for any game that costs over $34 in the um, store. Uh, sorry. The trials must be at least two hours. Um, I think and to be clear, this is a, this is a rumor of Sony yes. requiring this. Of, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't read the article. Is this internal studios requirement for internal studios or for any studio publishing on? It says the reportedly begun to ask developers. Okay, so it's it's a it's a strong ask to yeah. all developers. So, um, okay. I mean, honestly, in my mind, bring back game demos. Like game it. demos are great. Um, I think it helps alleviate on the sort of, hey, I played this game in in two, under two hours and I refunded it, sort of thing. You know. Um, yeah. I, I, I do think... like demos. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean no, you go. I like demos. But like, where does it? Do they have to create the demo solely for this if they're gonna try them out? I, I don't. I don't. I, I think it's. I think it's literally. You can start the game, but as yeah. soon as you hit two or three hours into the game, you're locked out of it. It's kind of like Nintendo's free to start thing yeah. that they were. And doing then you for buy it, and your progress it just unlocks the full game that's already downloaded. Yeah. Um. I mean, again, this is all rumor and speculation. I like that. I, I like it. Uh, uh, game demos are good. Game trials are good. Uh, Steam free weekends are good. All that sort of stuff that encourages people to play games and then possibly buy them uh, is perfectly. And terrible. honestly, look, I don't mean to assume, but I feel like this is much, much easier to implement than demos. And as long as Sony does it securely, it shouldn't really be that much effort on the part of the developer because it's literally just everybody has access. If you're PlayStation Plus Premium, you have access to this game. There's a clock running and then it cuts off. EA does it with their EA Play and their Origin Play, where if you're not at the top tier, you know, I, I played three or four hours of Battlefield 2042 without buying it because I got the first 10 hours free. Yeah. It's literally just a clock running. Every time you launch the game, the clock runs. Once you hit 10 hours, you no longer have access to the game. So th this should be a lot easier and simpler to implement than demos, but also cooler. You know, there's plenty of games where if I play the first two hours, I'd go, hell yeah, give me some more versus the first two hours of like Horizon. And I go, you know what? This ain't for me, so I'm not going to buy the full game. I do hope that PlayStation... Does, or the games that they submit to PlayStation aren't just like the tutorials, though, is what I would think would could backfire because yeah, you're not getting like yeah. an actual game experience. And like, do they That's cut you in point. the middle of the game or something like that? Who knows? But but if it's a if minimum of two a... hours, you might. I mean, there's a decent chance you're going to get out of that. Hopefully. But at the same time, if you launch a game 
and you play two hours of it and you're still in the tutorial and it's not something true. super yeah. appealing or yeah, interesting, it's then it's like, hey, this is an example of a bad game design and I really don't want to play this game anymore. There, yeah. there are very few games that have long tutorials that will actually draw you into the game and make it fantastic. Persona 5 is an example. I feel like it was like eight or nine hours into the game before I actually felt like I had freedom to do a bunch of stuff in it. But it was a great tutorial segment. Whereas something like Horizon, where you're just where they're really spoon feeding you in that starting area. And it's like, okay, all right. I think I've got enough here. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, My favorite game demo of all time. Actually, this isn't true. But Dragon Quest Builders 2 for the Nintendo Switch. I played 15 hours of that demo until it finished. And then I purchased the game for $60 and played another uh, played for another hour. And I haven't played since. But 15 hour demo. <laughs> wild to me they definitely deserved my money um yeah and i wasn't rushing i mean i wasn't going slow you weren't russian i I was ukrainian i was slow paced killer perfect um (laughs) should we slow down on the 9-11 and or russian probably probably (laughs) i can't tell I won't reference it one more time this show. Anyways, let's fly into this next one. Amazon's Twitch seeks to revamp creator pay with focus on profit. Uh, This is a Bloomberg story here. Sorry, Bloomberg. Uh, From one uh, person with a name. Uh, Twitch. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just find everything funny tonight. (laughs) Um, Man, this article is not loading for me. Uh, Anyways, this report came out. I've got it open. Yeah, I read some of the stuff already about Twitch. Uh, This is nothing. Is is what is being discussed behind the scenes at Twitch? None of this is like concrete or decided upon. But some of their stuff was uh, adding uh, incentives for streamers to run more ads, changing the payout uh, for um, I believe uh, partners partners and affiliates. Uh, and then if, if there's more, I, I only get up to private as the, in the article. Okay, here we go. I got it. I got it. So basically right now, if you're a Twitch partner, you get 70% of your channel subscription revenue. So when somebody subscribe, subscribes to your channel, they pay five bucks, you see 70% of that come to you. Twitch wants to cut that back to 50%. They want to, they want to take 20% more of that subscription revenue, which is bonkers because when you think about like patreon's cut when you think about like steam's cut of developers etc it's not 50 percent. <laughs> this is which is a huge change uh another option they're thinking about is to create multiple tiers as in like first tier you only get throwing numbers out here 20 percent, then you get 50 percent, and then you earned a 70 percent revenue split um however they're thinking about lifting exclusivity restrictions so for example if you're an affiliate or partner you can only stream you, if you're doing something live, it can only stream to Twitch live and you have to wait 24 hours before it shows up anywhere else. That's the reason why we no longer are streaming on Twitch and YouTube simultaneously because we're a Twitch affiliate and we have to stream to Twitch solely. We can't multi-stream. Um, these are just being discussed, but the whole thinking behind this is basically Twitch can pad their profit numbers by literally just taking more money out of streamers' pockets and trying to incentivize them by reducing uh, exclusivity requirements. And that's, uh, look, if they were going from like 90 to 70%, I'd be okay. I'd be like, I kind of understand. But going from 70 to 50% is in half, half the money that you raise for your channel doesn't even go in your pocket. That's insane. That's bonkers, right? This sucks, doesn't it? It's well, definitely it's- bonkers. It's not just that too. Like it would be that, and then they add all of the like. So when you are partners, you're already losing the benefit of having to run more ads too. So you get yeah, your money taken, true. and you have to run more ads. Uh, yeah. So like it's double whammy in terms of like negativity on your channel. You yeah, are already exactly. not happy when you have to run ads anyway. So yeah, I, I think that was the other thing they said, and this was that they're they're going to introduce something to basically incentivize people to run more ads, which feels like BS because you're taking money out of their subscription, but then forcing them to raise more money and raise your ad revenue in a way. So it's, they're literally just pushing all this, this profit seeking down onto the shoulders of the individual streamers. And that's, that's bad, especially when the services, I don't want to say there's services in a bad state, but the, the relationship between Twitch and their community is not great right now between all the hate raids, the uh, questionable content on the platform, all sorts of like, 
misunderstood bans, the whole thing with Dr. Disrespect that is still not public and, and led to some lawsuits. It's there's a lot of weird stuff going they on feel, with Twitch right they, now. They feel confident because there's no other the people who are they had they've gotten back some of the, the streamers that they lost or were like they just feel confident with like like I said, Mixer yeah. died. They won against Mixer. Uh YouTube's kinda awkward. Facebook has never been even a thing, so like they just feel yeah. confident where they're at. So I forgot they get too I complacent. I stumbled into that like far right Twitch YouTube uh like competitor website. I'm not gonna say the name of it. And like it was through that you know that Temple OS thing you sent me in? It was yeah. through that the like guy passed away, but they like they he used to go to like bar uh, not bars, but like gas stations on his trips and would just live stream himself coding. And so they're like uh -huh. airing the reruns of those. And I was looking at the links and it was like Twitch, YouTube, and this other one. I was like, what is that? So I like go to it and it's like this far right streaming website. Wait, can we can we stream hentai on it? Because we can't do that on Twitch. That's what I was almost thinking. I, well, and by <laughs> like when I say far right streaming, yeah. like I, I couldn't tell from looking at it. I like looked up Odyssey afterwards and people were like, oh, it's a, I don't know if it was far right or like right leaning or like it was just like a place to go to. Um, did I say the name of yeah, it? Yeah, you did. I, oh. I just want to say um, the to explain the joke because it's kind of <laughs> funny. Like two, I think it was like two years ago there was a, it wasn't a humble bundle. It was some other bundle. I can't remember if you sent it to me or if I just saw it and it was 30 hentai video games for like $3. Yeah. And I immediately bought it. And then I was like, I was talking to Will and I was like, we should stream this. We should do like a scan line series. This would be hilarious. We'll just blur everything. And then we were like, there's no way we can get away with this. And we were like, we came to the realization that like the only way we could stream or even host videos of us playing these games was on like Pornhub and like OnlyFans. And so there was a brief moment where we were like, should we ask Jake and Kyle if we can start like a subpixel Pornhub account <laughs> to post these hentai gameplay videos? And then we were just like, no, we really shouldn't. So long story short, I'm sitting on about 30 hentai games that I just don't Where's know the, what to do with. <laughs> where's subpixels uh, OnlyFans? Where is it? So, I, I mean, know. that's not a bad. I mean, there's you a know. bunch of those '90s, like uh, there was that Blue Heat and Rihanna Rouge that yeah. are like they're not porn games, but they have like but, boobies and stuff in them, or like artsy photographs. Yeah. And it'd be nice to not have to put in the effort of blurring things out. Yeah, if we uh, could just stream it yeah. live and be naked at the same time. Um, so, anyways, I forgot I came across that, and it just kind of blew my mind that it was. A thing and i had never heard about it and there were people streaming on it um anyways uh moving on here uh who wants to tell me about yuji naka and his his deepest darkest revelations or do i want to talk about it yeah you go ahead and talk about it um, start us off start us off i might jump in yeah i, I was just gonna say uh this is a tweet from nibel uh tr i think he's translating this tweet or at least summarizing this tweet from yuji naka uh, revealing that six months before Balan Wonderworld came out, he was removed as the director, and he then filed a lawsuit against Square Enix that is now over. Uh, he knew that the game was unfinished and criticizes both Square Enix, Enix and Arzest uh, for going forward with the release. Um, Balan Wonderworld, a game that came out and isn't very good at all. Um, Yuji Naka, Final Fantasy creator? Uh, Night, not... Knight's creator, I think, at least. Knight's, Knights creator? Dreams. Let me look him up. I know he's one of those. Uh, I just thought it was funny because yeah. that, that game was, um, I mean, critically panned for being yeah. a very much a kid's game, not having a lot of variety to it. Uh, Fantasy Star, sorry. There yeah, we go. Ki kids aren't allowed to play games. So Fucking Sonic shame, the dude. He programmed Sonic the Hedgehog, guys. The movie? Nice. My favorite. The whole movie. The, but the old creepy Sonic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I just feel like there's a run on like like game developers uh, uh, sort of uh, image being ruined when they can't say anything about it. Like yeah. people being like, oh, it's a Yuji Naka game. And then like being like, oh, we made such a terrible game. And him not being able to say anything about it because he's in a lawsuit is just like, I mean, detrimental on on the fence of not defamation, but like 
that guy gets kind of ruined, you know? I mean, this guy has an incredible storied past of working on incredible games, and he's kind of just reduced to that, you know? Shitty. I hate it. I guess, I guess it just takes... it. It's just how much people take into stock the, the news or the information of that, or they... they focus more on like his accomplishments rather than the, the recent you know true and, and again I'm, it's not to say that Bell and Wonder World was going to be some amazing thing if he was on yes. the end of it for six months I think it still wouldn't have been great it was out of his imagination but this is also the guy who was tweeting out about he was learning how to program or was this him learning how to program finally or is that was someone else there was a, I think it was that he was getting more hands on yeah because he had done programming for so long and then switched back to producing yeah he started producing uh he was programmer producer in 94 and then switched to supervisor producer in 98 so this man hasn't programmed he probably loves it hasn't done it since uh 1998 almost over 20 years and now he's getting back into it uh and it's just like i don't know let the man live let him land uh let him have fun sorry i'm i'm distracted i i just looked up the hentai bundle i bought Oh, I thought you were doing the, the wood cutting level too. I was like, that's, that's yeah, no, that's still going over You're here. You're making oh, high okay. school possession, topless hentai mosaic. I'm making a log right now. Hentai energy. Yeah, cyberpunk hentai <laughs> memory a leak. Log? <laughs> <laughs> I got only, when he's, only when he's at work. I, it was more of a stump, I if I played, recall correctly. <laughs> I just remember, I'd never even played Honey Pop 2. Man, anyways. Oh, I'm so sad for you. Um,. Let's uh let's wrap it up here. A uh, couple quick hits here. Sorry, I just I need to get out of here, you know. And <laughs> it's just uh, man, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> just oh, just can you send me those hands on games? Um, <laughs> Microsoft announced their quote unquote E3 showcase, uh, Xbox and Bethesda game showcase for June twelfth. Uh, not much else information on here. It's good to see at least one of the major players here still going to have their showcase around the same time. Um, they were never directly involved with E3 previously. Um, at least the showcases weren't. Uh, so it's cool to have that back. I, and it's on a Sunday, which means... Uh, the Lord's Day. It means i got to have to work on a Sunday. The Lord's I just Day. Realized. I was going to say, hey, it's on a Sunday. I don't have to work. But... I definitely have to. I, I am. I I do say with this one, like E three, nothing's going on with E three this year. There's worries that E three is dead forever, and um, quite frankly, I'm glad that Microsoft is stepping to the forefront and being like, no, that E three extravaganza is important, and we're going to do our part and have our showcase the same time, probably the same energy. I'm ready for it. E three is great. It. it forces people to do a bunch of big news all at once because otherwise you're just going to get like a piddle paddle like we had in 2020 with the the weird console runoff that lasted six months of like slow news drips and then eventually a console got announced or pricing got announced through a leak it was just just stupid without e3 we need we need the super bowl of video games yeah. to keep things organized and structured and to hype things up yeah so i'm excited for that Question for the two of you. Uh, they're calling it the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase. How, when, when did they drop Bethesda in the names? Oh. Ten years. Ten years? Ten years. Hmm. Yeah. I was going to say next uh, year when there's no Bethesda game coming out. I was going to say, which one comes out first? Them dropping the name or Starfield? Oh, so. I'm sorry. You're talking about the name in the showcase. I, yes. Yeah, I'm talking about promoting it as the Xbox oh, and Bethesda Games Showcase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a year or two. Uh, but I meant I could see them in 10 years just killing off the Bethesda name. And then calling Period. the studio it, just Bethesda Gameworks, it, Bethesda, and then calling the other studios other studios. Yeah, as all part of Xbox. You know, if, that's a good point. I can see that. Jason, go. My, my guess is whenever Bethesda drops another uh, – game that just just fails or just sinks completely again so probably like a year or so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah probably yeah. november yeah, yeah probably this year maybe if we're lucky man i'm so. yeah i won't let you talk me down i'm so excited for starfield i hear you but at the same time it's man, gonna they be have a god awful they have a terrible track record lately i'm gonna i know but i'm gonna love it and He's been i working trust on starfield for Phil like Spencer. how many years yeah but it doesn't i trust i trust todd howard 
I trust him. Yes, you see that mountain it, over there? It, it, I was you climbing. Yeah, you can climb it. Yeah, isn't isn't he the guy who has a meme song that takes a Fleetwood Mac song? Tell me lies. Like, isn't that like? Yes. Todd yeah, Todd Howard. Sweet Steve little song Todd now? Howard lies. Whisper him in my ear. Squeeze Todd. my thighs. Squeeze my tiny I little thighs. I hate what he did. Now, anytime that song comes on, it was like, oh Bethesda. I'm like, no, it's Fleetwood Mac. Come on, guys. Oh, no. Don't you ruin Fleetwood Mac for <laughs> Don't me? Don't do it. it. Todd's gonna. I'm gonna get Todd on here, and he, you're gonna you have some okay. s- explaining to do to Todd. I don't think he's gonna reach the mic. <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> I should genuinely reach he's out to Todd Howard. Man. Uh, I want to buy that I cut out of him. him. I've I don't seen think him in person. I don't think he'll come on anything I'm on because I definitely made him in my rom hack as a villain. And nice. Died, you know what? So. It's it's far enough that I feel like I can say it. I snuck into the. Uh, Bethesda 2014 Christmas party. <laughs> nice. And I got to see I got to see Todd Howard and Robert Altman and Linda Carter. Nice. And, uh, Patrick Stewart. They threw like a like literally like a million dollar party in the middle of DC for their Christmas party, and it was pretty cool. Did you kiss him on the on the head because he's so short? I couldn't reach him. <laughs> I couldn't bend over that much. <laughs> Oh, I, i'm okay. sure he'll come on the show after hearing all these yeah sure. todd we love you come on the show todd invite him to play the hentai games with you there's your segue yes yeah. play hentai todd see that <laughs> booby over there you can yeah. climb it yes. you can you can grab yeah. that booby do it todd. Yes. todd play that hentai game skyrim your way up the the lady todd you can craft a dildo todd <laughs> Uh, and then finally, uh, this. speaking of Bethesda, I know last one, I just brought this up quick. Uh, Bianca Reichert, uh, wife uh, and caretaker of Dan Reichert, uh, wrote a wonderful <laughs> article for Polygon about, uh, her, her memories of Morrowind. One of my first video games, uh, the first video game I ever purchased myself, uh, okay. for the Xbox. Uh, one of my favorite video games, a game I've been meaning to go back to and actually playing, because as a kid, I would just murder and steal everything and not play the game. Um, uh, wrote a great um, article just about her time with it and what it meant and what it like, how it influenced so many things. I think she relates it back to Elden Ring and how that was kind of her first Elden Ring, where like it opened up so many worlds and like things you could mm-hmm. do, uh, and how it like in Morrowind you don't you can't track quests. You just get journal entries and you have to go find the people. Like, it's very Elden Ring in that way. Um, there's no markers or anything. You just got to go do it. So um, definitely check that out. It's on Polygon. Uh, great article. Uh, and that's going to be the show. I'm going to hit this outro button. Folks, if you liked this show, you can head on over to subpixelfilms.com. That brings you straight to our YouTube channel where you can watch all of our hot, hot VODs. If you want to see some of our stream VODs, if you click on our channel and go to the other channels, there's the Subpixel Streams channel that has all of our streaming VODs on it that aren't shows. They're kind of just like the one-offs and stuff like that. Um, This Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern... We are premiering the Religious Games Show. Uh, we'll be uh, the Sunday service, I think we're calling it, our Subpixel Ministries. We haven't nailed down the name yet. Anyways, Ian and I will be presenting you with the holiness of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit by showing you the games that make him shine. Uh, we will be there. We'll be having a confessional, a blessing, communion, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so get ready for that. Uh, I believe my uh, my holy outfit arrives tomorrow on a chariot of eagles um, called Prime. Uh, folks, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian Gibson on Twitter at Think Gibson. And you can find Jason on Twitter at The Green 8 Ball. That's great. behind? Behind. Oh, I thought it was behind. I'm behind the green eight ball. Behind the Got green it. eight. On the green eight eight ball. E- eating a green Chocolate eight ball. Yes. Or you can catch him on Twitch at the green eight ball as well, right? Yep. That's Playing cool. those uh, those fire emblem. Hey, if I were to if I were to stretch out a little bit for the song to end, actually it's about to end. So never mind. We'll see y'all next week. Awakening. 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 Okay.